When the Q made their way through our spiral arm of the galaxy, they did so with the intention of capturing and genetically modifying any and all life forms that they discovered. And the star people, who were originally created by humans to colonise the galaxy, were the beginning of most of the Q-created new species that we meet over the course of all tomorrows. It is stated in the section entitled Colonials that the aforementioned species, who resemble sheets of human flesh with eyes and other human orifices and appendages, had put up one hell of a fight against the invaders. For this, they were severely punished, being transformed into what is arguably the most horrific form of future human that we're presented with in the book. So bearing in mind that the star people who had the audacity to fight back were awarded a truly nightmarish fate, it can be theorised that the other worlds that perhaps didn't fight back or surrender to the Q straight away may have been the ones to be remade into comparatively more preferable forms. When you look at a future human species like the Hedonists, or the finger fishers, for example, you can see that their new existence of lazing around on beaches catching fish or becoming pampered pets that the Q would look after could have been decided on by the Q based on how much resistance they were met with upon arrival. So while the previously mentioned examples could be elaborated on much further, in this video we'll be examining the Ruin Haunters in particular, and also theorising on why exactly the Q left them pretty much intact for the most part. As can be seen in the illustration, the Ruin Haunters still look remarkably human, at least when compared to the Mantelopes or the Worms, and they were also left with a vast amount of technology which, for some reason, the Q didn't completely eradicate. On all of the other worlds that the Q are known to have visited, the only things that they are believed to have left behind are gigantic mile-high pyramids and the modified lifeforms themselves. So why did they, on this planet, leave behind so much technology? It wasn't just Q tech that was left behind either, as it states in the book that much of what remained was built by the Star People. I do have a theory as to why this may have occurred, and why the Ruin Haunters didn't have as much taken away from them by the Q as some of the other world's inhabitants did. So going back to the Hedonists, this future human species was designed for a life of immense pleasure by the Q. They didn't have to do anything except lounge around all day, get fed by their owners, and make with each other. The ideal life, really. On the flip side, the Colonial's life was a living hell, because they had fought back. This would likely mean that the Hedonists, in their past life as star people, perhaps didn't fight back at all and instead they quickly and quietly surrendered. Maybe they knew that to go up against the Q was futile. Maybe the star people of this world already knew about the Q because the Q had already visited other colonised worlds that they were in contact with, and these star people had gotten wind of what was happening to the people there. So when the Q showed up on their doorstep, they probably just threw their hands up immediately and decided to take their lumps, but in not daring to try and fight them off, they were granted a much lighter sentence. They were made into their new pets, instead of being made into their new sewage processing system. Maybe it was by being subservient and recognised recognising the Q as the all-powerful gods that they considered themselves to be, that they would curry favour with them and be granted a much nicer future existence. They were, however, not left with any old technology, and once the Q had left their world for another, they had to start the evolutionary process from scratch. Now, when we look at the Ruin Haunters, we see that they still looked quite human-like, but unlike the Hedonists, they were left with a great deal of ancient technology. Why were those who were granted long lives of pleasure not also provide with clues to their old lives for when they eventually regained their sentience, as the Q certainly knew that they eventually would if left to their own devices. Well, my theory on why the Ruin Haunters got to keep their old technology, dear viewer, is thus. The Ruin Haunters' ancestors, like the Hedonists' ancestors, had surrendered to the Q straight away, but the Ruin Haunters' ancestors didn't just surrender to them. They may have gone one step further and done something else for the Q so as to gain their favour and hopefully not receive any genetic modification. Maybe the star people of this world, who would become the Ruin Haunters, sold out their fellow man to the Q in hopes of getting away unscathed. Picture this. The star people of the soon-to-be colonial world had fought off the Q and forced them to retreat twice. We know that they would, however, succumb to a third Q invasion. What if the pre-Ruin Haunter star people had agreed to work with the Q in some way to show them the weak points in the soon-to-be colonial's defences, revealing to them that they had been going about their previous assaults in the wrong way, and that's why they had been beaten back two times before? In hopes of being on the winning side when all was said and done, these star people 
people had sided with the Q, and so were partially responsible for many of the other human worlds falling to them. These cowards, these pathetic wretches, genuinely believed that they would remain unharmed if they cozied up to the Q. Perhaps the Q had in some way made promises to leave them be if they aided them in achieving their ends, but of course the Q, once these star people had outlived their usefulness, went back on their promise. The Q did indeed change these people into the Ruin Haunters, but with their own strange sense of justice, decided to let them off easy. They were still going to modify them because it was what they did, it was kind of their thing, but they would allow them to retain a mostly human human appearance, they wouldn't dull their minds to the point that they couldn't regain their sentience, and they wouldn't take away their technology. They were being rewarded, in a way. They would certainly re-evolve to become intelligent beings, and the Q would allow them to do this, as they indeed saw themselves as just and fair gods. The Q had no problem with intelligent sapient species, as long as they were intelligent and sapient species made by them. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video then please hit the like button and subscribe to be notified of future uploads. And also don't forget to check out the merch store, the links can be found in the description. This has been Beware the Q, and I'll see you in the next video.